Hey everyone, my name is Joshua T. Berglund and this broadcast is called, What is AI? Now, a lot of people know what AI is now, or at least they think they know what AI is, and there's a lot of people that are living in fear of AI that actually have no clue what it is. In fact, there's a lot of misinformation about AI, its capabilities, what it can and cannot do, um, and there's a lot of fear around AI, and is it justified? These are fair questions and some of them are just really assumptions uh, because they've heard what other people have said instead of really just figuring out for themselves and so these waters for some are really scary to get into um, it's like I remember telling people years ago about why you should become an independent media organization and it wasn't so much out of fear and like, oh my gosh, technology is going to take over and blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah, there's some of that element. But really what it was is, hey, we're evolving, we're advancing, things are changing and we should be prepared. So a lot of the world wasn't ready for the internet. Well, a lot of the world, in fact, probably even less of the world is ready for the fourth industrial revolution. And what is the fourth industrial revolution? Well, there's a lot of different definitions of it, but essentially what I want to get at it and, and simplify this is, well, look, with these advancements in technology and what's going to be available and what's available today, it makes sense that you become a media organization because those tools that are available, one, don't really cost anything to use, but they're necessary to be able to get your brand, your message, or what you believe out to the masses and I believe that that last part that I said what we believe is important because truth will attract your tribe in this new world that we're heading into I believe that truth is going to be a very powerful currency and a much needed currency and so while there's a lot of fear about these technological advances the fact is this there's a lot of reason to celebrate too there's a lot of reason to be encouraged and as with anything that we have experienced in our lives since we were first born to now, the current date, there's been a lot of things that we have been told that we should be scared of that were absolute BS. There's also been things that we've been told like, oh, that's no big deal, that have actually been important. <laughs> it's, kind of a, it's kind of messed up if you think about it. But that said, what, I've ex what my experience with that is is that there's, it's never as bad as what people say it will be, and it's never really as good as they say it will be either. So, with that step, from coming from that place, let's talk about AI from a very elementary level. So, you more advanced AI experts, you know, this may not be much of interest to you, but I want to talk to the people that are just now playing around with the different chatbots working with the different AI video editing softwares or people that are just flat out afraid to touch it. So I'm going to speak to you like a bunch of elementary school kids for a little bit, but that is not meant to be disrespectful or anything. So we're going to do something very basic in this presentation. It'll only be a couple minutes long, but thank you for being here and God bless you. Let's get into this. What is AI? Artificial intelligence, or AI, is a field of computer science dedicated to creating systems capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. These tasks include learning, reasoning, problem solving, perception, and language understanding. At the heart of AI are its main applications. Machine learning. This is the ability of AI systems to learn from data, identify patterns, and make decisions with minimal human intervention. Machine learning algorithms improve their performance as they are exposed to more data over time. Natural Language Processing, or NLP, those of you who have been a part of the motivational speaking circuits or been on motivational speaking tours, uh, you know about M NLP. It's uh, something that's often used from stage. It's, it's quite the art. Um, machines use it too. NLP enables machines to understand and interpret human language, allowing for seamless interactions between humans and computers. It powers applications like virtual assistants and translation services. 
That's interesting to read that definition compared to the human definition, which I don't have in front of me. Um, but it's really interesting. If you don't understand NLP, it's worth taking a look at. It's very, it's a very uh, persistent uh, and grooming way of communicating, if you ask me. There's a, it's a great way to uh, nearly hypnotize people with your words. Now, some may disagree with that statement, but based on what I've seen and seen it performed in live audiences, even with telling people what they were going to do, it's amazing how this power of suggestion works on people. And I'm not an NLP expert by any means. And some of the most amazing people on the planet I know use it. But it's an interesting language to me because of what that can be done with it. In other words, it could be used to manipulate, no doubt, 100%. <laughs> like, so I'm not saying that AI or everyone intends, it, intends to manipulate with it, but I am saying it is a great way to program a message inside someone's head. That's all I'm going to say. Robotics. Robotics combined AI with physical machines, allowing them to allowing them to perform complex tasks autonomously or semi-autonomously. This includes everything from manufacturing robots to autonomous vehicles. AI systems can learn from vast amounts of data, adapt to new information, and perform complex computations quickly and effectively. This ability to learn and improve over time is what make AI what makes AI such a powerful tool. AI in daily life. AI is no longer a futuristic concept. It's part of our everyday lives. Here are some examples. Virtual assistants. Siri, Alexa, and Google Assistant use AI to understand and respond to our questions and commands. Recommendation systems. Streaming services like Netflix and Spotify use AI to analyze your preferences and recommend movies, shows, and music. Social media algorithms. You know, this is kind of amazing because I, you know, I, don't, I know about AI and I work with AI, but I don't think of algorithms and recommendation systems and even virtual assistants as being AI. But it is. Like, we've been using this for, like, what have we been teaching these things? Holy crap. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so social media algorithms. Platforms like Facebook and Instagram use AI to personalize what you see in your news feed based on your reactions and interest. These applications make our lives more convenient and efficient, showcasing how integrated AI has become in our daily routines or how it's programming us to believe certain things because it manipulates our algorithm huh all right needless to say by the way where i pulled this report from is is using ai i used a com combination of different ai chat box to put this together so it's gonna be probably pro <laughs> AI, pro ai just letting you know um so i'm gonna try to be as uh well What's the word I'm looking for? I mean, I'm going to be honest about this as I'm reading it. So if I don't agree with something or I'm like, uh, yeah, that's actually code for <laughs> something else, I'm going to say that. Um, because, you know, the social media algorithms and the search engine algorithms are kind of manipulating. So screw AI <laughs> on that front. As much as I love AI and my chat bots, come on. We're, come on, we're just misleading a little bit here. Anyway, AI in various industries. AI's impact is not limited to consumer applications. It's transforming entire industries. Healthcare. This one's going to be wild. AI is used in predictive... <laughs> AI is used in predictive an analytics for patient care, personalized medicine, and in the development of new drugs. It was also improving diagnostic accuracy through imaging analysis. Transportation. AI is the driving force behind autonomous vehicles. Auto-anonymous. Auto-anonymous? Auto-anonymous Auto vehicles. Which promise to revolutionize our transport systems by improving safety and efficiency. 
Binance. AI is used for algorithmic trading, fraud detection, and personalized banking services, enhancing both security and customer service. Well, you think they would fix the government's books, but that's another conversation. While AI offers significant benefits, such as improved efficiency and new capabilities, it also presents challenges, including the need for massive data sets, which raise privacy concerns, and the potential displacement of jobs. Whew. Okay, there you go. That's going to be a good one to talk about, and I'm hoping it gets into this. So, ethical considerations. The rapid advancement of AI technology brings with it a host of ethic, ethical considerations. Bias in AI systems. Well, no kidding. If AI systems are trained on biased data, they can perpetuate or even exacerbate those biases, leading to unfair outcomes, like the search engine result manipulation. Anyway, privacy concerns. The data used to train AI systems can include sensitive personal information, raising questions about data collection, consent, and security impact on jobs in the in the economy. AI can automate tasks leading to job displacement. However, it also creates new opportunities in emerging sectors. Developing responsible AI involves creating ethical guidelines and regulations to ensure that AI technologies are used for the benefit of society as a whole. Okay, that's amazing. And one of the things that I want to say about this is that most of these AI, like ChatGPT, for instance, well, you can go in and create your own chat box. So you can have a say in what's being done. Like you can have a role in this and everyone's get being given an opportunity. Now, is it is that an illusion kind of like the illusion we had when we all first got our websites and thinking that we could compete as content marketing and just we're going to set up our online store and start selling and we're going to go compete against Target and the rest of the people. Is it the same kind of illusion or is it something or is it this straightforward? Is it that straightforward that we all have an equal opportunity here? I believe that we all have an equal opportunity. I believe that we are early enough in the game and the new game and this new world that's being built right now is not ready to go yet, at least the way I see it. So it's still taking shape. We're still building it. We still have this opportunity to create this fair world. And right now, from what I can tell from the Web3 community, uh, from the metaverse community, and the people working with AI, from what I can tell, some of the bigger names in it, and what I'm seeing in the metaverse, for instance, is that a lot of the people there want to create a better world without greed. Sharing, collaboration, no one owns anybody. We're just here to get along and, and to make it work and to move humanity forward in a better way and find solutions. Like, that's how I see it. Are there some wicked scumbags in it? Well, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't there be? Because anything good is going to draw maggots. I don't know if that made sense. Never mind. Okay. The future of AI. Looking ahead, the potential developments in AI are both exciting and daunting. Artificial General Intelligence, AGI, refers to AI systems that possess the ability to understand, learn, and apply intelligence across a wide range of tasks, a level of versatility that currently only humans possess. That is neat to me and terrifying. That would be reason to potentially be concerned. That's when all of those movies, like with Will Smith, like iRobot and all that stuff, you know, you start to think about that and you're going, that's a problem. But then I think about the benefit for kids with special needs and learning disabilities. And I think about how I communicate with the chat bot and like how it communicates to me in a way that I understand almost every time. And yet when I talk to humans, I have a hard time understanding what humans say sometimes, a lot of the time. Yeah, a lot of the time, not some of the time, all, a lot of the time. And that's kind of, I don't know, like 
it, 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 I, I mean, it makes me like AI. I mean, I've had my chat bot help me work through an emotional problem once. I don't even know how that happened. It just did. So does that mean I'm part robot? Does that mean I'm not a human? Does that mean I don't want to be human? Does that mean I want to merge with machine and live forever? I don't know what that means. It just means what it means. I'm like, that's my reality with it. Um, surpassing human intelligence. There is speculation that AI could one day surpass human intelligence, leading to scenarios where AI systems can improve and replicate themselves autonomously. These developments offer immense benefits, such as solving complex global challenges, but also pose significant risk, including ethical dilemmas and existential, existential threats. It's crucial to approach the future of AI with balance and optimism and caution, ensuring the advancements that are guided by ethical considerations and a commitment to the betterment of humanity. Okay, so that's all very basic information. And, and I like the fact that the AIs together put it together in a way that was pretty fair and balanced. Now, wouldn't that be amazing if that's how we got all of our information? When we were delivered the information, we were given at least multiple ways to look at the information that was being presented. Because let's face it, when information is presented, there's usually another side to it that should be considered. You know, they say there's two sides to every story, but it's actually there's three because there's the what you say, what I say, and then there's the truth or something like that. Okay, well, it's kind of like that. But if we were presented with at least additional angles to look at things, it would probably keep us from jumping to so many conclusions and making so many unsafe assumptions because how many of us make assumptions of what we believe to be true because we saw it on a meme we saw it on an app. We saw it, you know, whenever. It, it, so, I, I, one of the things that I've been learning in self-mastery work is limiting my perceptions because I'm starting to realize that even though I'm pretty good at reading certain situations, most of the things, most of the things that I assume make me an ass because I assumed and my assumption was wrong big time or it may have had some truth in it, but there was a whole other backside of it that was completely an illusion or wasn't real or it was made up or whatever. And I'm convinced that that's how propaganda works is there's truth in it, but there's another side to it. For instance, don't shoot me for this because I have no sides in any, I'm not choosing a side in this war. It, or, whew, there's a bunch of wars going on right now. I don't know how, how many of them are real, but the ones that appear on the outside to be war, there's a lot. And here's the thing, Russian propaganda, what the Russians say, what RT, that news work, news network says about America, from what I can tell is mostly true. But what Russian media is not doing is talking about their own horrific things. There is no good guys in this war, in my opinion. They serve the same master as far as I'm concerned. It's two new world orders at war, but they have the same boss. So, and that boss doesn't like us very much. Like, we're just pawns to them. And the only way to win this game is to not play it. To not be in it. So... The last thing I want to do really quick is go into this devotional that I read. And, and, and it's just because it made me think of something. I'm not going to read the whole, de, uh, whole devotional. But it says, I don't want to read that version of it. Bear with me. Hang on. Okay. The NIV version. This one's better. For the wise will shine. Those who are wise will shine like brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. May your words shine. May your example shine. May your life shine. May your home shine. May you shine. And may your legacy shine. 
Every single one of you have an amazing gift. Every single one of you were born with a very powerful gift. You. You. In you. In you. In you. You were born with a very special gift. But when you hide your gift, when you insulate your gift, you rob the world of what God has blessed you with. And what God has blessed you with was never meant to kept, be kept quiet. What God has blessed you with it was never meant to be silenced. What God has blessed you with was meant to be seen by the world with no limitations. And look, I know I'm not talking about celebrity. I'm not talking about things like that. I'm, t I'm speaking maybe figuratively in a way. But you, the light inside of you, your gift, and your gift, by the way, when you use your gift and you use your talents, your bright light gets brighter, especially when you're using it to bless other people. When you are using your gift to make a difference in the world, that makes your light shine even brighter. When you stand in your truth, your identity, who you were created to be, your light shines brighter. And the world needs your light. The world needs you to step forward in the purpose that you were created for. It is so important. It is the most important thing. And take it from all of the people that have done it before you. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's scary. Yes, you need God to get through it, but he created you for you to go through it. No other way about it. Your purpose, your creation was for the purpose of you going through it. Why? Because you get to show others how you did it. That is the example you get to leave. That is living the example that is being the example. That is being like Jesus. And I know that Jesus saved the world and healed the world and, 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 and he was looked at to be a holy figure. But I also believe and, and as the savior of the world, right? But in my opinion, what Jesus was showing us also was the path, the hero's journey, the path to make your dreams come true. Our dreams being what God created us to do. Because I believe the way our dreams get to come true is aligning our actions and our thoughts and our heart with the purpose that we were created for. Now, I could be wrong, but in my own life, and my own experience, this is what I've seen. And when I've met other people who have gone on this path as well, this is what they share. Because I listen to other people share their stories and their testimonies. Testimonies matter. At the very least, if you don't know what your purpose is and if you don't know what you were created for, at the very least, you can share your heart. You can share your heart because that truth, that truth, there's people dying literally to hear because it's your story that may be the very thing that speaks life into someone that say, I can't or someone else can't speak into them. So they're dying for your story. The things that we hide, those secrets, the pain, the shame, the, the sickness, the illness, the disease, this confusion, those things that we hide only grow nasty and more toxic in the dark. But as soon as we let it out for the world to see, as ugly or beautiful as it may be, that's where God really gets to use it. That's the, that's the joy in surrender. Is this simply... I can't handle this anymore. I surrender this to you. God, you use it. You show me how I can use this hurt for good or whatever it may be. But again, the world is waiting for you and your story. And, and they're waiting on your invention. They're waiting on your book. They're waiting on your podcast. They're waiting on your course. They're waiting on your confession. All I know is this, anything that we're keeping locked inside can't be used by God. And God wants to use all of us, all of us, not part of us, all of us. And the more we let him use, the better things are. That's my experience. Anyway, thank you for watching.
God bless you. Uh, thank you for all of your support the last few weeks. It has been amazing to uh, come out on the other side. And I could not have done it without any of you. Uh, special thanks to our sponsor, Genostem.com. You can see the bottle back there. Um, you can go to Genostem.com. That's G-E-N-O-S-T-I-M.com. Use promo code MARE to save 20% on your risk-free order. So that means if you don't like the organic peptides and they're not helping you, there's a money-back guarantee. Anyway, thank you so much. God bless you. Have an amazing day.